The only guy cooler than you is Miles Davis. That's what the head examiner told me at the end of the most competitive exam of my life. This was for my PhD. It was the final exam at the end of years of exams. I went to university for 11 years and I took many, many competitive exams and many of them were really hard because for many of those years I had fractured focus. I could barely concentrate on a sentence, let alone entire books, and I was required to read many, many books, over 500 books and articles for the three exams, the two field exams they're called, and the final dissertation defense. And what's so extraordinary about that is what I told him after. I said, well, I thank the Memory Palace technique because it not only helped me be cool and calm and collected, but it healed my broken focus. It just completely made my shattered concentration come together so that I could learn rapidly and remember what I had learned so that I was able to really not just focus and be concentrated in the exam situation itself, but quote from memory almost word perfect and sometimes completely word perfect, including delivering the page numbers that certain information was on. He told me that he had seen many, many graduate students in tears because they were so nervous and they were so fractured and they were ultimately destroyed by the people examining them because it is a pretty high stakes environment. However, Without getting into the whole shebang story about how that I was attacked in these exams and I had to quote from memory, which I did, including page numbers, as cool as Miles Davis. What does that mean, to be that cool? Well, it just means that you're able to reach into your memory and get the information that you need and deliver it without being emotional, without being carried away by the moment, and have it accurate, clean, precise, and accomplish your goal whatever that goal is. And in a competitive exam, <laughs> it's to pass, right? At least to pass, if not with flying colors. So you can go to that boss and say, look, you better hire me because I was in the top percentile of my year. So how does this memory palace technique work? How does it help you? The first thing that you need to understand is that the memory palace technique is understood by using it. So I want you to commit to using it. Hit thumbs up if you're committed. And if you're new here, get subscribed to this channel. We talk about how to use this memory palace technique and related memory techniques all the time. They are so fun. They're so powerful. They're so fulfilling. And you know, you don't want to miss a thing because it's just getting better and better. The more I use these techniques myself, and I've been using them now for a very long time, over two decades now, and it is super, super powerful. So I'll give you a little overview and then get started using them so that you just demolish all the questions that you have about them. I had a lot of questions about them too when I started to learn them and I realized that the way that you learn them is that you study about the techniques and then you practice them and then it all makes sense as you practice. But the very simple overview of the technique is, is that you've got a lot of stuff to memorize and it's very, very difficult to get it into long-term memory because, you know, using cards and Anki and, you know, all the space repetition stuff, that takes time to develop and then you got to sit there and you got to repeat it over and over and over again and it's super boring, right? So what do you do? You go and do something else because the brain is wired to do something that's more interesting, more exciting, more instantly rewarding. Now, the Mary Palace technique also requires some setup, no doubt about it, but it's so much more interesting and it is immediately rewarding thanks to how it works. So what you do is you take any room and ideally a bunch of rooms in a building and you create a journey through them. And then you place associations with the difficult information that you have to remember. And then when you revisit in your mind this journey, you think, what was happening here? What was this association all about? And then bang presto, the target information starts to come back. Now, sometimes it comes back immediately. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Sometimes you might hit the wall with your face and go, oh, I can't remember it at all. And then, you know, you either give up or you come back and study some more and practice some more and you figure it out. Because the reality is, is that the magic happens. The magic of memory formation happens when you're trying to recall the information. And if you give up at the first sign of trouble, you're not going to get very far. You've got to sometimes deal with the trouble, right? And I've got a video on troubleshooting that you can check out that will help you go through the motions of troubleshooting. It's just simple. So there's no reason to get caught up in trouble. You just shoot the trouble and then the trouble is gone, right? That's what troubleshooting is, isn't it? So you're placing associations in space, right? Well, how does that work? Well, just take this golden book behind.
behind me. It's by Giordano Bruno, one of the great memory masters who carried a lot of books in his mind when he couldn't carry them in his back. And he traveled all over the world and he went to competitive exams also. You know, he tried to get jobs as a professor and they would grill him and he would recite all this stuff from memory, all his knowledge. And he had great adventures in Germany and in England and so forth. He was from Italy originally and well, what an interesting life. But you know, you might be thinking, okay, so how am I gonna remember this name, Giordano Bruno? Well, you could just think of this space behind me and you could come up with an association for Giordano. Now, you might know someone like Michael Jordan, right? Or anybody that has that sort of Jor sound in it. Jordy from Star Trek, the next generation comes to my mind all of a sudden. And the more you train yourself in making these kinds of associations and then sticking them in space, the more you'll be able to go to that space and say, what was happening there? right? And you might think, okay, so Bruno, what am I going to do for that? Well, isn't there a movie called Bruno that is quite funny and kind of dirty and strange? <laughs> well, now thinking about Geordi from Star Trek and this Bruno character doing stuff, and I'm not going to talk about what stuff they might be doing. That's is wonderbar because it's very, very private. But the more strange and weird you make those things that they're doing, the more it's going to pop, right? And so all you have to do is prepare these memory palaces in advance so that they are well-formed, well-designed, and big enough to accommodate what it is that you need to know. And then you just start placing these weird associations. And then you go back and you say, what was happening there? What was happening there? And you go, eh. and then you think, and then you go, oh, it must have had something to do with Geordi from Star Trek, right? And then you go, maybe, oh, I, did, I can't get the full name. I know it was Jor or something, and I know it had Bruno, so Jor Bruno, well, probably your mind's going to fill in the blanks with the Giordano part, right? But if you needed to add something in when you found in your review that it wasn't there, then you think about, you know, who do I know? Dan Harris comes to my mind. He wrote a book about meditation. Good one. Uh, you know, you just, just stick him in there. Guten Tag. That doesn't work. You think of other things. So, you know, I happen to know a word in Chinese that has the Dan sound in it, right? So I would maybe stick an egg right here. You know, something like this. The more languages you know, the more you can use this technique. It's very amazing. It's powerful. And you just go from the next place to the next place to the next place. So once you're done with this bookshelf, you go to the wall behind me. Listen, if you really get into this technique, and you know how to use something called a 00 to 99 PAO, every key on a keyboard could be a little memory palace that you use to help you remember information. Every page in a book can become kind of like a little mini memory palace that you're able to then use to encode information. And you can use the number of the page to help you remember. And this is exactly what I did when I went to my exams. And you know, one of the reasons that I got that very big compliment was very simply that I said when I was attacked during the exam, yeah, 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 you didn't talk enough about this, blah, 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 blah. And I said, actually, on page 72 of my dissertation, and lo and behold, it was there. But before I said page 72, I started to quote Nietzsche in German. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what you want to be able to do in those test exam situations. Now, one of the inevitable problems that students have is they say, well, I don't have enough memory palaces. I don't have enough space. You know, you might feel like that, but this is your mind messing with you. You do have enough space. You have enough space not only to get started, but enough space to start training your spatial memory so you think differently about space. Because there are buildings everywhere. And everywhere there's a building, there's going to be a square or something like a square. And everywhere there's a square, there's going to be corners. And everywhere that there are corners, there are magnetic stations where you can place associations. Jawohl, ich liebe es! What you have to do is walk down any street and just think, where are their squares? And begin to make a strategy of how you're going to use them. Now, yes, that takes a little bit of setup, but once you start practicing the setup, you can start making these Mary Palaces really in two to five minutes, if not seconds. It really depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Now, there's a video on this channel called How to Memorize a Textbook, and I talk more about the granular details of how I did this and how I also have a selection process because I never tried to memorize everything from a book. I only tried to remember the big details, the big ideas, and you'll start to find that less is more. The more you memorize, the more you create these associations, even just three points from a chapter is going to have this web of connections that will help you remember more of the things that you didn't memorize in a dedicated way, but you still remember it, right? And one of the reasons that that happens is a mystery to me, but I call it the rhizomatic effect. And 
It also happens in, well, if you use my training as I teach it, you're going to have it happen anyway because you're going to recall the information in a particular way. And some of those ways are going to be practice exams and you're going to write from memory what you remembered. And as you're writing from memory, you're going to reflect on how it connects to different pieces of information. So you want to reflect, you want to connect, you want to direct, and you just want to respect memory. And I've just given you a little tip of how you can also use the Mary Palace technique on your own body, on the bodies of other people. But the point is, is you need to take it out of the Mary Palace. Once that you've memorized the information through association, then you've got to actually use it. So writing summaries is huge. Instead of, you know, fretting about the exam, worrying about it, start to write in your own words the things that you've learned and reflect deeply about how it connects to the other pieces of information. If you don't spend time in reflection, then you're really harming your ability to learn. You're harming your brain's ability to connect. And you want to just deliberately do it. And the memory palace is great for this because you don't need notes. You just think, where in my journey was this piece of information? And then you can ask different questions. When did this information come into being? When was it important historically? To whom was it important historically? To whom is it important now? What happens? What's at stake when somebody is correct about this particular piece of information? You're spinning the dials of your mind, right? And then you can think, how does it connect to psychology? How does it connect to economics? How does it connect to whatever? You know, just keep going through the list of things. And the more you rotate through these dials of possible connections, the more your brain is literally in neurogenesis. It's creating more connections. So you've got active recall plus what you might call ars combinatoria, the art of combination. And there's a lot to learn about the art of combination, but it's that simple at the end of the day. And if you really struggle to think, well, how does it connect, right? How does it connect to economics? Giordano Bruno. Well, you know, A, letter A. How might it connect? Well, he probably ate apples at some point. So did he ever talk about food? Then you do your little Google search and bang presto, turns out that he did, right? And then you go to B and you're like, okay, so what, biology, did he do anything about biology? And you could search and go, yeah, well, it turns out that he did talk about biology. He talked about the structures of the human brain. Now we would no longer think that those things were correct, but nonetheless, if you had a test on Giordano Bruno and you needed to know facts about him, you just go through the alphabet. C, well, what might he have had to do with, I don't know, cryptocurrency? Whoa, it turns out that he did have something to do with, you know, the general area of cryptography. Some people thought he was a spy in his memory wheels. And so on, you go to D and you think about all this stuff. Did he have something to do with dentistry? Kind of silly, right? Well, I don't know, but you don't have to do every letter of the alphabet. But the point is, is to get things started, to go through the alphabet, to get connections, to get ideas about how you might compound your knowledge. And this itself will help you remember more. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you can do that with each and every piece of information that you have in a Mary Palace. You can do it with pieces of information that you don't have in a Mary Palace. And the more you do this on the way to your exam, instead of fretting and worrying and getting all squeamish, the more you're going to be able to have the confidence that you'll have things to say and you'll know how to say it in that exam. And of course, if you want to go to the next level and you want to be able to remember the exact page numbers, the exact dates that things happen, you want to be able to quote from memory in different languages, then I really encourage you to go through the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. And if you're not subscribed here and I haven't convinced you yet to go through the Masterclass, please get subscribed, hit that thumbs up. I am always so grateful to the supporters of this channel. I got a couple more tips for you on exams, but I'm just it's the most amazing thing to be able to do this and to talk about these topics with you. So thanks for being here and thanks to the channel members who support this. And here's the number one thing that I would suggest and it helped me so much. Use your memory palace work in a relaxed state. Always relax yourself before that you sit for your study periods. Relax yourself as deeply as you can. You can memorize texts that will help you relax yourself. And I wish that I had known more about that back then, but I used to just wander these Mary Palaces and breathe. No, oh, and just let it go. Let go of any tension. Practice letting go of the tension. And what you're doing when you do this is you are conditioning yourself to be relaxed around the information. And then when you're sitting for that exam, you know, you're in the lecture hall where they're passing out the exams, you do it again. 
relax yourself. You connect deeply to that relaxation that you brought to each and every study session. Now you can do it through breathing, you can do it through muscle, progressive muscle relaxation, right? Just squeezing your hands, squeezing, oh, everything, squeezing your feet. I'll never forget this guy who left a weird review on one of my books. He said, the guy talks about squeezing your buttocks to help your memory. You're damn straight I do. It's one of the things that helped me so much just to squeeze all the major muscle groups in the body and then do it again when you're waiting for the exam to begin. You'll be so glad that you did because it, it helps your creativity. It helps you let go of that monkey mind. And the other thing is just the mental attitude of being willing to let it go. Let it go. I remember sitting for my final exam outside, waiting for them to call me in before the big grilling. And you know, I had to do it before the public. The public was invited for this exam. And I just told myself, relax, don't worry about the outcome. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Billions of people have lived in history. They all died. And here you are in the miracle of existence right now, getting to enjoy life. And you are worried about whether you're going to pass or fail this exam. Yes, the stakes were high. I had tens of thousands of dollars, almost a hundred thousand dollars invested in my educational career. What was I going to do if I didn't get my PhD? Well, I probably would have just came again and did the exam again, right? Don't have to worry about it. Just let it go, let it go, let it go and enjoy the moment. And you know what? I did. And that's why I think I was called by Victor Vitanza, the only guy cooler than Miles Davis. So if you want that coolness, build your memory palaces, practice them in a state of relaxation, focus on the biggest ideas, and then contemplate them from memory and connect, 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 and respect your memory. So this is really, really important. And I know you're going to do great. And I can't wait to hear how things go for you when you do. And Thank you.